So let's see how we can create an enclosure around it. We go to concept. It's not here. Okay, let's go to tools. And we can see an option here called enclosure. If I click on enclosure, it takes me to a set of options that asks me to suggest what my enclosure level should be. Now naturally our circle diameter was around about 10 meters, our circle extrusion thickness was also about 10 meters, so it would make sense that the enclo enclosure be bigger than 10 meters. So we can create a more natural environment. The more bigger the enclosure, the more natural the environment is. But just to show you what this means so if I use the default values of the enclosure which is one meter and again I go to my lightning sign I know I have to generate it and I click generate right click click generate and I generate the enclosure we can see the box is 210 and if I rotate this the gap between the box and between the circle is 210 which means that the airflow does not have enough time to pr properly hit the circle and do its thing therefore my enclosure has to be big so I would go back and I'll right click and say edit selections and I'll change my enclosure size from 1 now to 10 10 go back to enclosure again click generate so we can see now that the enclosure is much bigger again you would probably say it's not that big because the enclosure size is roughly the size of the circle extrusion so therefore let's make it three times so if I go back now again right click edit enclosure and from 10 make it three times just 30 therefore now I would make my enclosure 30 enclosure click generate and now we can see that we are getting somewhere to a more realistic phenomena where the air inlet travel or the air inlet area meter square is much larger than the inlet area meter square of the circle now different research practices tell you different good practice guidelines uh, but normally if your enclosure is above 2.5 times the area of your geometry then you are usually in the safe zone so I would recommend the enclosure size be at least two and a half times larger than your geometry which in this case we are because we are at 30 um, whereas our area or the diameter is about 10 meters so that's the enclosure you can make it bigger smaller and now we can see on the bar here that the bar goes up to 100 meters and that is why at the beginning of my talk I was mentioning to be very careful about the the dimensions because what happens is um, you can create the more area this this takes the more computing power it will take to mesh and the larger the file size would be so even though the circle and the box appear small on this screen but while we are meshing it it is actually meshing 100 meters square of your geometry and therefore the computational time and therefore the computational file size would be much bigger so if you are looking at a prototype level make sure the units are also done at a prototype level so what we have done now is generally made the geometry very very general geometry and we have created a microclimate or an enclosure around it to simulate the next step we need to go to is mesh before it is ready to be processed so I will close the geometry tab now because the geometry part is done notice that now this gives me a green tick which means the first stage of my ANSYS fluent journey is complete